good morning, everybody. We do apologize for the technical glitches that we had this morning, but we're going to go on without further ado. And we are going to begin this morning with a rendition of the national anthem performed by a first year liberal arts music student, Miss Kiana Duplacy. Please stand for the national anthem of Antigua and Barbuda. Father, we ask that you bless the proceedings here this afternoon. We give thanks that you have been able to see us through the, these various courses and that led us to this day. Lord, we ask that you bless those who are here today, those joining us online, and those who are in any way associated with the Antigua State College. We ask that you continue to give us guidance, that you bless us with good health there, Lord, and we also ask that you be with us throughout this day and forevermore. This we pray through your name. Amen. Please be seated. Learning is a lifelong process. Whether it is in the structured classroom or it is in our sojourns overseas to faraway places with strange sounding names or to random surfing on our mobile devices. We learn new things every day. And so as an institution of higher learning, we here at the Antigua State College are particularly thrilled and embrace this whole concept of lifelong learning. The whole idea of expanding the suite of skills, expanding one's capabilities. And that's why we're very happy to be here today and to welcome you to this ceremony to commemorate the completion of several training courses launched under, under the auspices of our newly established training and development unit. We'll hear a little bit more about that later. With us today, we're very pleased to have at the head table our acting principal, Mrs. Jacqueline Richardson, the head of our training and development unit, Mr. Dwayne Simon, and of course, our guest speaker today, Ms. Cassie Roberts. We also want to thank those of you joining us here in the auditorium. We are trying to make sure that we adhere to the COVID protocol, so we have a handful of people in person and many more joining us online uh, via the stream on YouTube. So our thanks to those of you joining us online as well. So without further ado, because this is a very short ceremony, we are going to invite our acting principal, Mrs. Jacqueline Richardson, to welcome us with a few words. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to those here in person with us this morning and for those who are joining us online via our YouTube channel, on Facebook as well. Uh, a special welcome to our invited guest, Ms. Casey Roberts, to the head of the Professional Development Unit, Mr. Dwayne Simon, and to all the facilitators who are part of this inaugural um, training hosted by the Professional Development Unit. As Ms. 
Kenji said that, you know, we have an institution of learning and lifelong learning is one of the mantras that we profess. So I would like to thank all our facilitators with a depth of gratitude and I don't think we can afford to pay you what you truly deserve for the hard work that you put in throughout this training session with our students and faculty and staff members that joined. Also for the students who, who took part in the seminars in those activities as well. My task this morning is to welcome you to this brief session and I hope that you would learn that those of you who have learned throughout this, through this training session would get an opportunity to use those skills as well in the future. So welcome to this session and I look forward to you seeing you again in our future professional development sessions. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from the head of our newly established training and development unit, Mr. Dwayne Simon. Thank you, Ms. Kentish, for the introduction. Good morning, Antigua. Good morning, everyone gathered here today. My simple task today is to give you an introduction of the training initiatives that we've had and to answer the simple question, why? Why are we doing this? Now, the training initiatives, the concept was to design a short, that is five-week course, in four different areas that we felt could benefit, not only the students, but also faculty and staff. The areas that we chose to focus on were graphic design, coding, website development, and the very exciting principles of web. Now, to answer the why, the reason why we are doing this, oftentimes in academic institutions, the focus is entirely on the bookwork, the academic study, the tests, all of these submissions. But what about learning practical skills? School, skills that can help you in the now, skills that can help you during the summer, or skills that can help you to launch a career. And we felt that in those areas, graphic design and website development, for example, what if that student or staff member to celebrate the participants and also celebrate the trainings? You'll get to hear a little bit more from the participants about what the experience was like, and you will also get to hear from the trainers as to what their experience was like. And I just want to briefly pause to thank each of the trainers that took part in this initiative. We have Ms. Joanna Joseph McKenzie, and she led the website development, which is very exciting. Can we give her a round of applause? We have Mr. De Devante Hunt. He was asked and he immediately jumped on the challenge to serve. And the students were so excited to be able to design and do weekly submissions and it was very engaging. Did you know that when we put the call out there, within the first day we had hundreds of persons interested in being a part of it. They, what they liked about it was that it was free. You know, but they could easily recognize that a program like that would be worth several hundred dollars. But they were happy that we were able to make those provisions, put those provisions in place for them. Also, we have coding. Now, there's several persons that believe that STEM is the future. And some persons may be interested in coding and, and developing and programming, but perhaps they're not quite sure what it's all about. That coding course gave them an introduction on how to write code. And it was so rewarding to see students and even staff members writing code, telling the programs what to output. I was extremely fascinated. And that session was led by Ms. Janine Edwards. And finally, we had quantum, quantum Investments with Jojo and his team. And they did an incredible job leading principles of wealth. The interesting thing about wealth and understanding money is it's something that our curricula seems, when I say our, I mean the nation, the region, we seem to exclude it. And that particular training initiative took you back to the basics and it was very extraordinary. And the persons, I, I can't wait to hear the feedback from the sessions, but it was very, very 
Him partners. I would like to thank them, Him and his team, and the ministers. So overall, we found that it was very successful. We want it to be something that continues in different areas and essentially give our students and all of our stakeholders an opportunity to develop their skill sets in areas that may not have established programs right here in Antigua. So thank you all for being a part of it. Thank you for the participants for staying the course. Thank you to Mr. Hunt for organizing this event. Thank you for the Antigua State College and our acting principal, Mrs. Richardson. Thank you to her for endorsing the program and supporting the program for day one. Thank you to ABS. It sounds like about to die for the dish, but I'm just so, I'm just so grateful uh, for the support. And thank you all. Have a great day. Let's get it. Thank you, Mr. Simon, for making my job of doing the vote of thanks so much easier. Now, we spoke about the whole concept of lifelong learning, and our guest speaker, our guest speaker is the embodiment of just that, a lifelong learner. She is a person who is multi-talented, multi-skilled, and has never passed up on an opportunity to learn. At the moment, she serves as the acting CEO of the National Training Agency, which deals with skills training and certification. But beyond that, she is a therapist, she's a trained chef, she's a teacher, she's a curriculum specialist, and there's no more of an appropriate person that we can ask to be our guest speaker today than none other than Miss Cassie Roberts. So we invite her to
when you look at the companies that would have done extremely well during the lockdowns that happened all over the world, they were the tech industries. Look at Amazon. They hired so many new persons during the lockdown last year, March to June, because then people were afraid to go out. People were pre prevented from going out. So then you went online and purchased what you want and they were delivered here or wherever you, um, you sent them to. When you look at the businesses that started up in Antigua during those times, it is businesses that had to use some form of tech skills in order to start up. Food deliveries, who would have thought they would have stayed in their homes, ordered what they want, whether it be pre-prepared food or anything from the supermarkets or so. You went online, somebody developed an app, and you ordered what you wanted. You understand? The entire education system went online. So this is an opportunity for you to develop your skills, to be able to tap into what has happened and what will continue to happen. You understand? So we're saying, look at skills training. I hope this makes you look at skills training differently. Become more confident in different areas. Become a lifelong learner. Search for information and continue. Because this can be a great thing for you to help to develop yourself. In that short space of time, I was shaking my head, you know, nodding my head so often because she hit the nail on the head. And we can all identify with the points that she made, especially the fact that we all need to supplement, beg your pardon, supplement our skills. It's not just that you can do this and this alone, but as we saw in the pandemic, so many people were able to fall back on other skills and talents that they have to be able to supplement their income. I could even remember one particular case where a friend of mine was able to order um, cheesecake from a guy who was actually a pharmacist. So he actually did have his day job, but because people weren't going out, he and his family, they would bake, and on the weekends he would take orders and they would drive around delivering. And so skills are very, very important, not just for us in terms of our day-to-day -day jobs, but as you can see, they came to be very, very helpful during the pandemic for those people who have that entrepreneurial ability to go out there and be able to make a living. So I want to thank you so much for touching on that because that is very important to the process. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how the sessions actually went. And you're going to hear it from the horse's mouth, figuratively speaking, of course. And so we're going to give an opportunity for various people to come forward and share briefly their experiences, starting first with our instructors. And I will start first with um, Miss, Miss uh, McKenzie. Oh, Mr. Instaful, if you don't mind, ladies first. So I'm going to ask Ms. McKenzie and then uh, Mr. Instaful to come forward and share their reflections on the various courses. Thank you. Change the date. Uh, 
there were quite a few students who messaged me after each session asking for some assistance. They practiced some of the elements. Um, so the feedback was great. And I am looking forward to future projects with the college for us to not just focus on the students who are taking the technical courses or the IT courses, but anyone else who has an interest um, to show them how easy it is to develop and actually to be online and have an online presence. Thank you. And now for Mr. Jojo Instable. everyone. Thank you so much State College. Thank you so much uh, staff, uh, faculty, and students for your interest um, in our collective future. I look at the initiative, uh, the initiative as ground shattering, innovative, pioneering, and I really think that it's a seed that is planted that will offer many fruits for all of us for years to come, given that we are consistent and that we continue to develop, myself included. I actually approached uh, Ms. Mrs. Richardson early 2019 to offer the same course. And right after approaching, COVID-19 <laughs> came and took, took us by storm, took us completely off guard, and well, it was just a line. Of course, it came at the right time, and of course, it came with the right intention and with the right support. So I really want to say kudos to Antigua State College for um, being willing to change their blueprint, or I would say the status quo of how the education system normally works to approach something in a, in a different way. I really think that uh, a lot of institutions can take a leap from that book in terms of adapting and surviving and moving forward and thriving during this pandemic. Um, in terms of the actual course, the participation was really something to, it was amazing to see the involvement, the participation and the interest of all of the students. Um, well, I want to just uh, talk a little bit about what this is. Who is quantum investments? What is principles of wealth? Quantum investments is simply a local online community. So we are young people uh, who interface on a virtual platform and we share investment opportunities that exist all over the world with each other. So we scour the internet and we look for financial information that gives us here in Antigua an edge in the financial space. Um, many may have heard of cryptocurrencies or decentralized finance, maybe even digital currencies, Dcash or things of this nature. But my question is, how many of us know what this is even about? why it was created, how it actually works. And so for anyone who has these kinds of questions, to really cut to the core of these new innovations and inventions, we as quantum investments help to break that down and explain it to the average person who wants to understand before they want to invest. And so we, of course, encourage future State College students to I mean, join the platform that we have at Quantum Investments, but then also to keep on top of their innovations and their interests, uh, whether through State College or their own unique passions and interests. And I want to take a step back to add to what our guest speaker was saying. I want to ask a question. Is intelligence knowing something? Or does intelligence also include not knowing something? I'll put that in a different way. Can we say that it is intelligent
for someone to admit that they do not know something. As a representative of quantum investments, I want to say that yes, it is very intelligent for any person, uh, of course, as um, our moderator stated, learning is a lifelong process. So for you to be able to step back and to say, I don't know, is actually one of the highest forms of intelligence. Because by admitting that we do not know, that allows us the opportunity to begin to know. Right? I don't know how to code. <laughs> I don't know how to design a website. I don't know how to do graphic designs. But that does not mean that we do not have the tools, the resources, and the people available to us to learn how to do these things. And that once we do tap into this knowledge, that we can experience things that we never imagined that we could experience just by admitting that we did not know. And this goes for everybody, both students, faculty, children, adults, every single person has to be able to admit learning is a lifelong process. And that means at some point or another, you will not know. And so at Quantum, we break things down right to the core. We start building a foundation of wealth and investment. And what we actually show our participants is, you are already wealthy. You just didn't know it. We here in Antigua have an abundance of wealth. Sometimes we just don't realize it. We just don't know it. We have resources that are untapped, not just natural resources, but human resources. We have our intellect and our human ability to tap into our own minds and to uncover our own potential. You cannot put that in quantifiable measures all the time. But what that means is right now, during this COVID-19 pandemic and in the future, if we can tap into that, if we can admit that we didn't know and that we have the potential to learn and to know, I think we can see the next CEOs of the next Amazon, of the next Google, the next set of engineers, the next creators, coders, and innovators coming from right here in Antigua and Barbuda. It is not impossible. But we have to first admit that we don't know. Maybe we have not been doing things the way that it has to be done or the best possible way that it could be done. If we can admit that we don't know, we can make quantum solutions. Thank you so much once again for having us here and for making us a part of this amazing initiative. Very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Instafo. <laughs> and uh, the beautiful thing about these courses, they were not available exclusively to staff. They were also available to our students. And many of our students tapped into this opportunity, including our next speaker, Mr. Daniel Antonio, who is a year two liberal arts student, who took three of the four courses on top of his regular course load, and I happen to know that he's the president of um, one of our clubs, so he's a very busy, very active young man, but all of this effort is going to pay off for him, for him in the long run. So I want to ask Mr. Antonio to come and share his thoughts uh, about the courses that he took. Please welcome him. Good day, good day. Yes, um, first and foremost, this initiative was a Probably the most exceptional thing that happened for the year. Uh, Alright, yes. So, this initiative was very exceptional. Uh, I, can, I can guarantee you, I can speak for everyone, and we definitely learned a lot uh, from each episode. Being a part of the graphic designing, I learned to apply techniques that I don't think I would have learned not being in the graphic design initiative. Simple as the different aspects of art and 
learning week by week you know, how to apply those things and to even capitalize on you know, uh, for principles of wealth. I think that was the most eye-opening experience I've ever had in my life. You know, uh, learning the difference between money and currency. Learning the history of how currency even came about. Climbing into the website development, I to be honest, I didn't attend as much classes, but I still learned, you know, the, the basics of what a website is, um, the operation of a server, and to keep this short and simple, I'd like to thank every uh, initiative leader, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out to actually teach us, to, to teach the youth, to really share your life experiences with us. And if it wasn't for you, uh, a lot of us would be not knowing you know, the things that you taught us. Thank you very much. And now thanks to Mr. Antonio, I'm going to ask him to, I'm going to say thanks to him. Um, I know he has a class to go to, so I want to thank him for making the time available to share his reflections on the classes um, that he attended. I actually did miss one instructor, and I would like to ask uh, Mr. Devante Hunt, who came in as a recent staff member, as a, as a, as a recent, uh, as a new hire basically, and jumped right in without hesitation, um, including teaching one of the courses. So I want him to come and share his thoughts at this point in time. Mr. Devante Hunt. so much to everyone who participated. It's, it was a wonderful initiative to be able to see these young individuals be passionate about something that is still related to education. And even as the instructor for graphic design, we know that it's still seen as a very modern thing in the Caribbean. So seeing that form of interest from each participant really made it wonderful. Mr. Antonio spoke before me and he was one of the most participative individuals in my class. And seeing and hearing him even speak to me personally and told me that being able to attend a session like this, free for cost and knowing the value of it, is what made it even more important to him. So I'd like to once again thank everyone for even being here. And I'd say the initiatives went extremely well and when session two comes around, we'll see what other new courses we're able to offer and what else we'll do for our students, our staff, and our faculty. So thank you so much. The recurring theme, besides the concept of lifelong learning, is the value. Because if you go online, one of the things that's emerged out of this pandemic is that a lot of people are using their skills in teaching and trying to share their skills, but they're doing it at a premium cost. And the fact that the college has been able to offer these courses to staff and to students free of cost, it's, it's a value that we cannot measure. We can't, we can't put a, a dollar value to it. It is something that's going to benefit the staff members, the students, all the participants for the rest of their lives. And so this is the point now where we are going to just share some highlights and share with you the people who have completed these courses. In order to obtain a certificate, each participant would have had to attend 60% of the classes. And ordinarily, we would have a ceremony where we would have everybody packed in the room, handing out the certificates. With COVID, we have to rethink that. So I would like now to turn your attention to the following video so that you can get a sense of who these participants are and we can also share in their joy that they have successfully completed their program.
To wrap up this uh, afternoon's proceedings, I would like to use this opportunity to uh, invite our trainers. I'm going to ask Mr. Simon to come forward as we present some tokens of gratitude to our trainers for participating in these very important courses. Thank you very much. And we have a few tokens of appreciation as a show of gratitude to our trainers. And I will first invite Ms. Joanna Joseph McKenzie, if she could come. Very wonderful class. in the same office as me, so I just hope he opens it. Uh, <laughs> the is at work. And uh, finally, we have uh, Mr. Jojo in support and his team on the circumstances we will hold that for a little later. Uh, but thank you once again to all of the trainers as well as the participants. And so it is my duty as we uh, close the proceedings to move the vote of thanks and I have to start off for first with the obvious in terms of the four trainers Namely, Janine Edwards, Jojo Instafol, Joanna McKenzie, and Devante Hunt. Thank you so much for imparting your knowledge, your skills, your patience um, with our participants. And we cannot thank you enough for all the hard work that you put into this and making this um, not just a concept, but a reality. So thank you very much. Our thanks to those who participated in the programs. We had, from what I understand, well over 100 students, is that my um, correct understanding? Um, engaging, yeah, I shouldn't say students. I say students from the time, in terms of those who attended the classes. 
We had 100, over 100 participants um, engaging in these courses. So we are very pleased that we had so many people, and this is like in one class. Um, so this is just to give you an idea that this is something people want, and we are so happy that, this, that, that our staff and students have recognized the value and have signed up and say, yes, I want to broaden my horizons. So thanks to the various participants. Now this could not be possible without the support of our acting principal. This is Jacqueline Richardson and the team at the Antigua State College. It is a collaborative process from the top right down, right across. Whether it was Mrs. Richardson in making things happen or just those on the ground, whether um, they were in the admin office or the groundsmen, just to get things done, we want to thank all the staff members who had a hand in making sure that this was a reality. So all thanks to them as well. Our guest speaker, we cannot thank you enough for being so gracious and providing really some valuable nuggets of wisdom during today's uh, ceremony. And we want to say a big thank you. And at this point in time, um, we have a token for you. We'll uh, present that to you at the end. This is being streamed live uh, on YouTube and we want to thank and recognize the Education Broadcasting Unit for their continued support in making this happen. So our thanks to the good gentleman there, including Mr. Francis, and I want to thank both of you for being here today for making that happen. It's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Maybe even that's a course that we can look at later in terms of webcasting. But that's something, it's a skill that they have, and it's a skill that we have, they're happy that they're willing to share it. To uh, the nation station, ABS, for being here to cover. We want to thank you as well for being able to provide this or share this with the rest of Antigua and Barbuda and indeed the wider world. And with that said, I want to turn my attention finally to Mr. Simon and Mr. Hunt, uh, since they're the ones who are basically in the training and development unit getting a lot done. And Mr. Simon has worked tirelessly day and night, and I'm very grateful, that I'm sure Mrs. Richardson is very grateful that he has help in Mr. Devante Hunt, who I said earlier was able to not just to come in and do administrative work, but was able to jump in and teach a class, and that too is highly commendable. Mr. Simon, Mr. Hunt, we cannot thank you enough for all the hard work that you put into this. We are tickled pink that we have seen such a resounding success in these, in these initiatives. Um, the bad news for you now is that since you've set a high standard and you've set the bar very high, it means then that there's going to be even more work for you down the line. So now I want to invite our guest speaker. We have a little token for her. And uh, I want to thank Ms. Roberts for coming. And so I just want to say a big thank you to you. And we're going to present this token to you. nuggets of wisdom um, to everyone today. Again, to those of you joining us on YouTube, thank you so much for making the time um, to, to join us today in this new normal. And for those of you, the few people in-house, thank you so much for bearing with us and being here this afternoon. Thanks again to everyone who had a hand in this. Continue, please. Stay safe. Be safe. Have enjoyed the rest of
fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that.